What's going on, people? This is 1166 Podcast, and I'm your host, B-L-K-Z-E-N, Black Zen. This is the first ever 360 VR podcast. If you love what we do, please like, subscribe, comment, leave five-star reviews, everything. Without further ado, let's get to the content. You may have talking to your mic? Yeah. Yo, 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 Ora, oh my, ora! I bet. Damn, we finished this dub, bro. That shit was important. That, that shit was important well. for both of us. Like, that, that shit hurt me, bro. That door is therapy. No, when I was done with that door, nigga, that shit hurt, bro. Why? Like, I, I could feel the energy off it, and I'm, I'm not gonna hold you, nigga. What did you shut off of the door? Fuck the door, bro. You're missing the point. I'm gonna tell you. What's the, what's the difference with the door and everything that worked? Like, it's all spiritual shit, bro. I know, like, for me to actually just put the work in and get the shit off, I had to do it, right? Listen to me. Mm-hmm. Don't, 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 don't judge me. I'm here. But I had to deal with it, like, spiritually. So as I dealt with it spiritually, I just did the work because I knew I had to do it. And you're a good <laughs> nigga to me. So mentally, like, I'm like, yo, I got to help my nigga out. But any kind of negative energy that was on that door, like I came in already built to like. Get it out. Thank you. Yeah, but after I was done and we finished, it hurt. Why though? It hurt, bro. I I could see what happened before. I could see everything that door seen. When it swung open and like been there for all these years, I could see everything that happened. I know that sounds crazy to you, but no, it don't sound crazy. And that's why I had to deal with the fumes and all that. And then I know you may look at me crazy. No, like yo, why this nigga deal with the fumes and all that? Because you got to deal. You were feeling it. You were in the moment with the door. With the door, like I got the it. The fumes like, are the the the. <laughs> The door's cries, like, nigga, this is what happened. I get it, I get it. I'm not going to mask myself on that. I'm going to... I they, smell this shit in my hair right now. Exactly. You, I now you in understand my hair. what I said. Because you, you have to take the pain that that shit felt. And then you, then you felt it. That's why I like hard work. That's why I'm like, yo, lack of your shit. Like, your shit be clear. Because it's no energy that will sit on your doors. You see a door? Yeah. Nothing it's clean. It's clean. Right when you go to churches, the real churches, nothing on their doors. Like clean, clean, clean. So now it's like nothing could stick to it. That the as much as people come here and sit down and record and do all their shit, nigga, that shit will never be absorbed in the doors. Do you think lumber is better than hemp, or hemp is better than lumber? I gotta try hemp first. Hemp has a lot of potential in terms of material. Depends on where it comes from. High quality hemp, high quality lumber. It doesn't matter what comes from what. It's the, it's the perspective that. Fair, fair, fair. It does. Yeah, the, the intention, what you put it in, when you put it on the wall. I know what I was doing when I was ripping the shit off the door. Like I knew exactly. You knew the goal. goal. You knew the goal. It it took so long to like take the shit off. So I'm like, yo, something's holding on to the door. But I don't want to talk to you like you know, on another level. But at the end of the day, it's something that was holding that shit. I'm like, yo. Clean that shit, bro, and don't destroy it. Like, keep that door. Because the door is going to... Yeah, bro, that door is going to solve so much problems. I'm, I'm sure. Just, just for us fixing the door and, like, helping it... Like, that shit is therapy. Stay, Cleaning that stay, door? Yeah, stay it's sturdy. Therapy. No, just staying sturdy with the door, bro. Like, I'm not going to hold you. It may sound crazy to most people. And mentally, like, but, yo. It helped me. When yesterday when I was messing with and it hurt me, bro. Like that, the, the, the door actually sure. hurt me, bro. Mm. It hurt me, bro. Maybe when I finished the door, like it felt like I won a championship. I can see why. Yo, yesterday when I was like, for me, my goal yesterday when and using a whole other quarter of paint stripper was to see a lot of brown. That was my goal. Just to see a lot of the main color, strip off a lot of the extra layers. It wasn't even to. 
get it down to what it was because I knew we was going to finish it together. You know what's the funny part about I knew we was going to finish it together, but I was like, yo, this you know, shit. You know what's so funny about everything? It's beautiful. Is? Like, as I finished, I was like, wow, this is a beautiful thing. There's like a hundred, literally a hundred, a hundred and ten, hundred twenty years of paint cares. on this door. I care. So there's never nobody. I care that door has been through a lot. <laughs> There's never nobody, because I care. I had a treat. I had a treat. Yeah. Like, by the Rockaways. Mm -hmm. Like, when you cross over the Rockaways, mm -hmm. you're trying to get across, bait. And this is a real story. Mm -hmm. These are real stories. Like, the tree was there. And um, the tree always... My ear's ringing right now. But we always went to that tree in the night. Why? What was it about that tree that did that for you? This is supposed to be the first tree that I was planted in New York by the Rockways. Like, we used to go by it, and I always respected it because you could see everything from there. You could see the waters. You could see the train overpass. We just came off the highway. You can see everything that really goes off in New York yeah. at that tree. And um and at first it was more like a, like a fun thing. Like we'll pull up over there, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Probably do what we do in the car, like chill. But after a while, the tree started growing on me. And mm -hmm. I actually read the shit and I'm like, yo, this is the first tree. I'm like, there's a reason I keep coming over here. And then I started touching the tree. And when I started touching the tree. How did that feel for you? To touch that tree and its essence. No, it changed it. my dreams. Mm. The minute that I noticed that the tree changed my dreams, I went back. And I realized that when I had to ask for something, I started touching the tree. But then I, I then I started like respecting it better. The mm. soil that it was on. Make sure it was good. And I started taking my shoes off. Boom. Like just respecting it. Like, yo, nigga, you've been here longer than us. This is it was the first tree planted in New York, and I could see everything just sitting here. Bro, it was nice that I went over there, and there's bottles of liquor that could never get finished. Mm. And there's multiple people with us. Mm. That tree has energy. Yo, you could never finish the bottle of liquor with that tree. Ever. As soon as you touch it, Bro, one night we walked out on a platform. You can ask Ryan Riggs. We walked out. We should have died that night. As a matter of fact, I'm going to call him right now. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Hey, Siri. Call Ryan Producer 3. Calling Ryan Producer 3. Hopefully he pick up. Most likely he not because he with his daughter. If he picks up, he picks up. If not, it doesn't matter. I don't really care when people pick up. Anymore. I just care about making my statements. I don't Damn, my life is so different now. You ain't gonna pick up. Hello? No, but I can make phone calls all day. About the tree. Watch this. I'm gonna show you some shit. There's some, there's she said, enter password for mother, higher frequency. She gonna chat. She gonna chat to you all too. After you call your mom, I wanna get to the first segment. You already recording? Mm-hmm. I'm recording. I capture moments. I, I, I didn't even know you was recording yet. Ah, shit. This tea is a mess. Chances are everybody's going to call when I'm in my zone. Bro. Hello? Mommy. Hi. You're so, How are you? You're so annoying. What happened? You're so happy all the time. What can I, because I, I know who I serve. I know who I believe in. I know I trust. Mm. What happened? No, I love you. I love you too. How are you? And there's one thing. I just want you to do one thing for me. What? I think that's the only thing I really asked you for, like in general as a human being. Like, re retell me the story as me being a kid again, because you're recharging me right now. And it's. It's oh my complete. god, you can't tell the story. You can't remind yourself of the story every time too. Just talk it to yourself. 
when you was a kid, we were having devotion together. We haven't had rain in a long period of time. So we were, we, we, we had no, we had, our water was really, really low. And I said to you, Nikhil, why don't you pray? that God will send some rain. And by the time you open your mouth and you pray, down came the downpouring a rain and our vessels were full. Okay? All right. That's it. But I'm back here now. I'm about to... You're back. Yeah, I'm back here now. I'm back at the point where I could tap in. I just... It took me a little bit of a while, but... I'm just telling you that I'm, this is... This is about, it's going to... Greatness is about to happen, mommy. Like... I'm just happy that I'm back here. Like it took me a while, and give give thanks. Yeah, give it actually had me in tears. Be, just know that. Be obedient. Be obedient. It's hard, but I'm gonna do it. It's not hard. It's it's not hard. If you are obedient, your life will be prosperous, and you will have everything that you need. You just gotta be obedient. Obedient is better than sacrifice. I love you, mommy. I love, I love you too. All right, call me for anything. I'm here. Did you talk to the guy? Yeah. No. Hold on. I'm gonna talk to you about that later. Just give me one second. I'm gonna call you right back. Oh. Okay. All right. You think I can make that up, nigga? You think that? Yo, Zen. Wake the fuck up, bro. Zen. Yeah. See, now you up. I am. You ready? Yeah, Let's nigga. Let's get it going. Yeah, so, bro, I been had it going. You fell asleep. Because we were talking about the preliminary shit. I want to get to the nitty-gritty topics. The first topic is sex bots. Stop. We were talking about How the sex bots. How are going to get all sex bots and I just talk to my mom about making rainfall? The fuck? We started. We talking about sex bots. What do you think is the future of sex? I think, honestly, sex bots are going to advance to the point where people don't have to put up with the bullshit of their partners. They don't have to. They choose to because they love them, or they don't choose to because they don't need them. But I think the future of sex bots is going to be people having personalized, customized poom poom, and women going to have dick all in between. People going to have customized parts that satisfy them. So they're not going to have to deal with people because they need to. What you think it is? Nobody cares. They do care. The porn industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. Stop it. This nobody cares shit. I heard you say that shit like 15 times last time I edited you. Stop saying that shit. People obviously <laughs> fucking care. No, they don't. They do. Because I'm thinking If you about think they don't care, you're obviously sleeping. It's a multi billion dollar industry. People care. If you can provide a sex bot, niggas will pay tens of thousands of dollars. And if you don't think no, that's no, not no. true, you're and sleeping. No. When, when it comes to a sex bot, like. Don't give me that no. nobody cares bullshit. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm give not going to real answer. My bad. I'm going to give a real answer. Like, that's my deflection. But. If you look at it like the the sex bot, like if it has like AI technology where it could actually converse and make moans and sounds and, and boom boom could work and shit like that, and and the pussy works like like a regular pussy works, like damn, like that's an issue for people. Unfortunately, like yo, selling pussy is out the question. Like strip clubs is out the question. Selling pussy is automated. The, um, OnlyFans clip like. Clipped. It's just like you could purchase your own sex bot. So if a nigga could purchase his own sex bot for like twenty, thirty thousand, like why the fuck would he even like? Fuck you don't need to invest in another person. You don't need to. All you gotta do is pay for the services, charge her up, lubrication, like boom, cleaning. Like, that's it. No, but niggas will act different. But I'm a rare nigga, so like I like the organic connection, but. At the end of the day, if they're selling sex bots, like the way that porno is working and the clips that porno is pushing at, this is different. It's a different thing. Like I'll probably be the only organic nigga. Like I really want an organic bitch. Like I want a bitch that really loved me for me. True work. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? I feel like sex bots have a lot of potential, but it's also gonna cripple people because if you're used to your sex bot and your sex bot does what you want no but you can't what, sell what, what, your sex bot that's no a, no no listen to what I'm saying that's a whole different no, scenario that's not like, what I said too far. that's not what I said listen to what I'm actually saying not what you think I'm saying if your sex bot is personalized to you the AI technology hold on if your sex bot is tailored to you 
Why deal with somebody else's pros and cons? You're not going to be able to talk to nobody. No more. It's a fact. You're just going to focus on your shit. You're just going to focus on You're not going to yeah. need them. No. <laughs> not going to need them. There's nothing holding you back. You get your nut off, you go make your moves. All right, so now let's rewind everything that's going on. Yeah, talk to me. So, uh, damn, Let's bro. get into it. Let's Yo, get into it. Yo, I hate the it. fact that you did this. Let's get into I, it. I, I specifically told you. <laughs> you I said, I don't want to talk about it. sex, man. I, I don't want to talk about that. We're I told talk about you it. not to do this. <laughs> no, bro, I told you not to do this. I, I, I specifically asked you not to do this. No, we need to. Because the conversation that I'm about to have about to get crazy. is not for everybody else. It's not. Right, look. They'll be all right. Look, if, 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 if somebody's like, they're looking for a sex bot. Like, yo, bro. Like, that's it. So now, if if sex is eliminated. Yeah. Reproduction also. Diminished. Boom! It's right. going to drop. No, no. But not at the end of the day. When you reverse it, it's like, what, what, what is... What does females bring, really bring into their men? You need to have actual values. You can't just hold pussy. You, you, you gotta can't. have actual values. You can't just hold so now, pussy. So now Guys can't just hold it's dick. It's a whole nother list. Yeah. So niggas been chasing pussy for so long. You need to have I values. I know niggas that get shop and get flea just to get pussy. You feel me? I'm not that nigga. So I, I would never understand that vibe, but I could get it. But you got to get flea and do all this shit to get pussy. Yeah. And you got to show off to get pussy. You got to do shit to get pussy. When you don't have you, to you anymore. You dominate to get pussy. And then, but when you, when you but when a nigga don't got to dominate to get pussy, I'm not going to hold you. Different the, the, game. The, the, Different the, game. I, I, I fuck with Wall Street and the stock market. Like the pussy value. Plummets. For those, for those of y'all who ain't see, Mickey just did like a downward curve. What happens there? Hold on, I'm about, I'm about to use the bathroom. Give me one second. No, hold on a second. Yo. 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 Yo, what's going on, my boy? I'm about to pull up over there real quick, man. No, I'm, I'm at 1166. I'm actually doing a podcast. Anyway, sex bots. So when once, once sex is off the table, it's going <laughs> to... Tell this... <laughs> <laughs> oh, what up? Oh, what is that? what's up to you? Yeah. Bro? Yo, happy birthday, nigga. You fake birthday ass nigga. Huh? You said what's up? Yo, oh, you a vibe. You know that. You already know, bro. We all vibe. Talk nigga. to me. We Yo, all fuck let's around, go. nigga. We all win, nigga. We, <laughs> Talk bro, to me. We all vibes, bro. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, yo, bro, I go to places, I, I shut shit down. Like, I don't play, bro. And I'm like, damn, bro. Like, damn. Like, I can't believe we vibes like that. Yeah. I be having bitches fuck with me. They be like, yo, I yo, fuck with you. Yo, energy vibe, is something just, important, yo, honestly. That's something. Nah, but but people don't get that. A and lot that, of people don't get it, but it's like, they, 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 I think people get it, but they only get it when they realize they don't have it. <laughs> They, they, they don't people have don't, it. People don't know what they oh, have you heard that? until it's gone. Nigga, you don't have it, bro. You... Turn that shit up. Put him on the mic. Oh, say that shit again. What'd you say? They be mad that they don't have that energy. They, they be mad. That's a fact. People be mad they don't got that energy. Nah, I don't know what it is, but with us, like, when we outside, like, it's just a vibe, like. And that's all I'm trying to tell Zen, like, I'll be, it'll be a vibe, like. Like, one of my shows I was talking to her earlier, she's like, yo, you actually paid a bitch to leave us alone. I'm like, yo, yo leave us alone, bro. Yo, <laughs> like, yo, you told me that story. I did that, I bro. Crying. No, but she For told the story. who don't know, Mickey That's not a story I would tell. Like, I like a, You want to tell your story? I'm about to tell. That shit's funny. People need to hear that shit. No, nah, that story's funny. I, I'll let I'm her gonna tell, tell you, that I'm shit. I'm going to tell you. So, boom. <laughs> Mickey is in a club. He's with a bunch of friends. He's with, you know, women all over. Yeah. And he's in a section. And there's a particular woman who pulls up, and she's there for the entertainment, obviously. He pays her off to leave. He's like, yo, take this money, go buy yourself a drink. Go Thank you. Go away. Go away. Go away. We don't when want you When he said there. that, I was howling. I was howling. It's funny. We don't, we don't give a fuck. Unfortunately, You're not supposed to y'all, y'all actually met somebody that don't give a fuck. Unfortunately, I don't give a fuck, bro. I just want to win, bro. 
We don't win because we determined, bro. We don't know. Fuck determined, bro. We don't, don't win because we fuck. execute. Fuck determined. We, we don't executing, win we execute. bro. We executing, like. We determined. Put him on the mic. Dedicated, bro. Say that again. Oh, what? What? Determination and dedication. Bro. We don't give a fuck. Yeah. That's how. That's how it feels, like. And the sad thing is that people don't understand that slap. Like, damn, the nigga slapped me in the face. I right, bet. Like, look, we were determined, educated, and we're ready to go. Like, we're not playing with you. Like, move out the way. When I when I leave my room, nigga, I want to make sure when I come back in my room, my bed is made. The shit is clean. The laundry is done. It's clean towels. That's how we got to treat life, bro. Yeah. We got to treat life like a fucking fresh fucking... Yo, fresh hotel room. Fuck, fucking resort. Fresh, fresh hotel resort room. room, bro. Yeah. Period. Fresh, That's how we gotta treat life. Fresh condo. Like every time we leave and we come back, it gotta look clean, bro. bro fresh condo. Period, bro. Always. You understand what I'm saying? That's a fact. We gotta treat it like that, bro. Unfortunately, but unfortunately, people push us to that. Do your thing, bro. Go ahead, bro. Record. So anyway, sex, sex bots. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like a lot of people be focused with with a sex bot. A lot of people will be focused when you eliminate the need to chase pussy. It can enact a lot of people to do a lot of dangerous change in the world. I don't know what it means to other people, but I know to my culture, and I can only speak for myself. I know to my culture, black men need their women, bro. Mm. Break it down for the people. Why do black men? Why do black men need their women? Break it for down. spiritual influence, mm. for the energy that we grab from the moon and the sun and and how we push and heal yeah. and do certain things, There's certain natural things that black men and women could do that it'll be hard to even explain. Yeah. Unless you actually understood. If you actually un meditated and understand certain things, it's damn. Do you feel like that's only exclusive to black men and black women, or is no, it? no? So who does that go for? No, it could be people? it could be practiced by by it could be practiced by anybody. Oh, even Abraham, before when Abraham got his skills, and he did what he did, he went to Kemet. Yeah, and then he learned how he had to do, and then he went and freed the Anasky dudes from the mountains. Mm. So it's not a, only about a color; it's about it's a a knowledge. Being, yeah. It's tapping into something deeper. Correct. Yeah. So tell me, what do you feel about people right now in terms of tapping into ancient knowledge versus what we have in science today? I think ancient knowledge is key to having an optimal future. With the with the lessons we know of the past, it can pave a way for a sustainable future. Sustainable future. That's how I personally feel about it. I think if you have the understanding of ancient knowledge, you can mash everything up. Mm. Unfortunately, like I'm unapologetically, like that's what I'm gonna chase for. For you to obtain the ancient knowledge, you have to actually visit these places. Mm. You have to see. Why is ancient knowledge a key? Break it down. All right, ancient knowledge is the key, in the sense that people were able to communicate with each other without having a language. They were able to communicate through water and through visions. So now we're communicating with speaking. So we dumb the, the senses down. And instead of mentally like doing certain things as a sixth sense, like we literally dumbed ourselves down to like communicating physically. Supposedly, like everything was broken down. I don't even want to talk about Bible verses, but if you know the stories, follow through. Like the shit was broken down because everybody spoke the same language. Mm. But we all still do. And so the Tower of Babel. So the answers are already there. Yeah. So that means that we're all fucking idiots because it was already written mm. and we're not actually trying to practice what we were supposed to do. Does not, that make any sense? It does, but now when we take the Bible out of the equation, what does that mean for future technology? I personally believe that if we learn more about ancient technology, we can make sustainable future technology. What do you feel about the current path of technology as to how we What going? I feel about technology, it's already been written. What's the next step then? If it's already been written, what's the next chapter? First of all, take a deep breath mm. and play the numbers. 
What are the when you say play the numbers, break that down. What does that mean? This is interesting. What does that mean? How many months in a year? Twelve. That's one plus two? Three. All right, cool. All right, bet. How much months usually how many days usually in a month? Thirty to thirty one. Thirty. All right. That's it. That, that's three. What, three. Okay, cool. All right, cool. How many hours in a day? Twenty four. That's two plus four? Six. All right. It's divisible by three. All right. Let, let's continue. Yeah. Let, 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 let's let's find out. Keep man. it going. Keep yeah. it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. All right, bet. So so now let's let's get past everybody's ego. Everybody just listen to the numbers. How many degrees in a circle? Three hundred and sixty. All right, three plus six. It's a nine. How, how many? How many degrees, seconds how many, are in a minute? How many? Sixty. Seconds? Six. Let's that, that's, that's not even do that. Like I could just demolish this. Yeah. All right. How many degrees is in a line? One hundred and eighty. That's one, one plus, plus eight. Nine. nine. All right. We're in a holographic universe, guys. Let's wake up. Like everybody, wake the fuck up. Like we're obviously in a world that's already calculated. Like it's already calculated. So if it's already calculated, like, let's just enjoy the experience. But you're either here for the experience, or you're here to make a change, or you're here to change souls, or you're here to do what you got to do. But e even with Jesus, when he was at the Last Supper, right? Jesus was at the Last Supper. Jesus' name is Yahweh. Yahweh is six letters. It's Yahweh. Okay. Throw that in there. No, no, no. I'm not even doing that. Go ahead. Let them figure it out. Yeah. No, I just want to talk it real simple for everybody. Like, look. Jesus was at the Last Supper. He was there with his 12 disciples, right? Yeah. You know the only off thing about that whole supper? What was off about it? He made 13. That's how he knew that somebody shouldn't be there. It should have been 12. Which it should have been 12. Three. But instead it was 13, which led to 4. All right, let, let's make it even more weird. Go ahead. God created the earth. Let's go to Genesis. God yeah. created the earth, right? So God created the earth. I right, bet. He created the earth. All right, so let's look at it. In seven days, supposedly. No, he didn't. Six days. The seventh day was six. rest. The Sunday was rest. He rested on the seventh. All right, let, let, let's go again. Let's go again. Jesus knew it was supposed to be 12 of them. God knew that it was supposed to be six. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? So you guys are being religious and thinking and talking when all the numbers are right in front of you. Look at Psalms. Let's play the numbers. I'm not even gonna get there. I'm not. I'm not gonna go there because that's disrespectful. I'm, I just want to make it simple for yeah. everybody to kind of understand, like how I'm looking at shit. We went over. We went across circles. We went across the straight lines. Like we literally talked about everything that we need to talk about. Went over angles. Let's see the life. The things I have tattooed on my arm. Like, look. You see this right here? Let me dust this off. What's a, well, what are you dusting off? This this means for the people who don't see the video. All right, this means God is everything. So you're pointing right now to your forearm tattoo. Yeah, this is God is everything. It's a Muslim tattoo. Yeah, but in the Muslim tattoo, you can clearly see that this is a three and this is a nine. You can clearly see everything that we see in life is a six. That's the seed of life. I can clearly see that the Kundalini. And the energies that run through us run through a six. Anything above a six is all spiritual. For somebody to understand, like we just understand, like this is weird, bro. It's not weird. Okay, okay. It's weird in the sense that it's not normal, but it's not weird in the sense that it's natural to humans. It's something that we resonate with, but it's something that society, for some they reason, never tries get to it, disconnect bro. us They're to. They're retarded. They would disconnect us they from. They just want to watch fucking news and It's about and the distractions. Media, like, the distractions and gaining people's yeah, attention bro. is the I, biggest I currency. About, why, why, I'm, I'm going to get traction on social media because at the end of the day, I enjoy the podcast, but I got to work on my, myself too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you Like, should. I picked up my cell phone. I got my cell phone. I have my cell phone for a month. Usually I crack cell phones and do all kinds of shit. I purposely didn't get a case because I'm like, yo. You want to take care of it. I'm man. not going to destroy my cell phone. So when I said I wasn't going to do it, I actually took it to heed. Yeah. And it was actually a mental exercise to me. I care more about my messages. I care more about like what I do. Like, This is a vibe, bro. It's a vibe. But why ruin the vibe but with protection? Like, yeah. I can take care of my shit. Like, Something about the risk is beautiful. It makes you accountable. Because the, the, the cost is higher. 
The risk is way higher. If that drops, iPhones are fragile. Every, it's going to Every time I take my phone shirts. out of my pocket, crack to that's $1,200. Right. Like, right, yo, let me hold on to my shit, yo, bitch. It's going to break the pieces if you drop it. Yeah, look, I, I squeezed my iPhone. My iPhone responded to me. That's why I like this shit. Back to the sex bots, though. What's your ideal sex bot? What the fuck, nigga? If it would be a sex bot created that could actually have an intellectual conversation. Yeah. She could be connected to, you see, look how weird I'm going to get. She could be connected to my iPhone, all my text messages. She'll know all my shit. She'll know all my business. She'll know all the real bitches that I deal with. And then she could consume that and literally create a realistic experience for me. Yeah. That would be the ideal sex bot. Mm. She could like some of all the people that I talk to and everything that I do and still conversate and talk about all the shit that I talk about and all that, that 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 would be the initial sex spot because at the end of the day, like mental health is everything. But at the end of the day, if I had a bot that, fuck the bot, because it wouldn't look like a bot, it would be like a human. But at the end of the day, if my bot would actually understand like everything that I'm talking about, you understand what I'm trying to say? But what you're describing to me is not about a sex bot. You're describing to me an assistant bot, a girlfriend bot. I'm talking about a sex bot. You talking about a girlfriend bot? What's a sex bot? I don't want to fuck no random bitches no more. Of course, but you're making a sex bot. It's going to be a tailored sexual experience for you. What is that like? It's a sex bot. I agree, though. In terms of the sex bot, to make it impactful, it needs to be your assistant. It needs to be your, your like, you have to confide in it. It needs to have information on you that's personal to you that it won't reveal to anybody else because it's programmed not to. But what does this sex bot mean to you? What is going to make it different for you that, that, that X's out partners potentially? What would it take? I just told you. It needs, to, it needs to harbor that information. It needs to harbor the information. Give you but advice, I'm proper to... advice. No, no, no bias. fuck advice. I don't want no fucking what advice. What do you want from a sex bot? No, the sex bot it needs to fuck when I want to fuck. Fair. Fair. <laughs> fuck. No lip. Just let me do Stop what talking, I do. Yo, let like, me do what I do when I'm ready. Time to go. Like, I'm ready. Like, yo, shut the fuck up. No, but at the end of the day, like, I understand the question that you're asking, but that that situation would never be created, and that's the difference between AI and what's going on. That's why AI, AI, AI technology is crazy. And she could understand like all my friends, and she could wake up and be like, "Yo, your friend's calling you. Woo, woo, woo. I wanted to wake you up." Woo, woo, woo. I, I would want my sex bot to be more than a sex bot. I want my my sex bot to be able to make breakfast. I want my sex bot to be able to chill. I want my sex bot to be able to vibe. And I want my sex bot to be a sex bot without even knowing that she's a sex bot. I feel you. You want more than a sex bot. You want it to fit into your life. It does it fit in. You want it to be something you can show off, something that helps you in many ways. Not more more than sex. Helps you in your life. I don't I don't want to have this doll in the closet that I blow up and fuck. No, I could, no, 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 no. I you want, you want a sophisticated bitch, like, a, a secu- sophisticated yeah, thing that borderline you want sex bot, like, yo, is an assistant. You're committing. Yeah. I think that would help a lot of people to cope with life. A lot of people don't know what the hell to go through with life. But something like that, I think, could be very therapeutic. Very therapeutic. Because the thing is, too, when we, when we talk about sex bots and we're talking about society, but then a good amount... Hold on, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. A good amount of people will not have sex. Statistically speaking, a lot of young people right now are not having sex. I'm not having sex. A lot of people are not having sex. Now, when you have a sex bot, one, it's safe. I don't have Two, sex. I fuck. Hold on. A lot of people are not having sex. Outside of the sex, a lot of people are not having deeper relationships. If you can have a machine that does both, you check off two big boxes in the mental health space. Because without sex, or at least the option to have sex, there tends to be a lot of mental issues that follow. So... To have a sex bot that can do what you're talking about and be able to be more than a sex bot, fit now into look, your look life, at look at the it's flip side. Different. Imagine having side? a sex bot. Yeah. And then, like, if if the sex bot is so perfect, yeah, 
Fuck that. People are thinking about robots. Yeah, they're yeah. They're yeah. gonna make these these things like they're humans. Of course. Imagine if you had something like that that's human, and then you had another bitch like fuck you with your sex bot. That would be fair. That's the goal. Three so much your sex bot. That's not even really this, cheating. This, this bitch would lick pussy for fucking an hour. I would never be able to do that. You put her I, on I'm the charger, it don't even matter. She's chilling. I'm going for like 20 minutes, 15, 20, if, if I want Until your jaw hurt, but her jaw's yeah. mechanical. It got WD-40, you good, and she keep going. Nah, you thinking like I'm thinking. The sex bot, maybe the you wanna put You want to push the sex bot to the limit. <laughs> That's what you want to, you want to push it to the limit. You want to see what, how much can this Yo, actually do? How much can do? this bitch do? How nah, much do you fuck. actually do? Yo, charge that bitch I paid, up. how much would you pay for a sophisticated sex bot? 10 bands. Would you do it? You can clean it. You can do all that. It can walk around. It can talk. It can like have jokes with Hold you. Hold on. It'll clean itself and take care and put itself on charge? No. Because that's the futuristic shit. That's, that's the shit that we watch. Okay, fine. Right. If she could it charge can clean herself, itself clean herself, and go on its own charge. Get dressed on herself, do all that. How much would you pay? I don't want to talk about that. 50 racks. No. Like 20. 20 racks? Yeah. You pay twenty thousand dollars max for a bot that can clean itself. You and have I probably sex wouldn't with even it. fuck that bitch for months because I want to see. If It'll she be your fuck friend. It'll give you advice. I want to see how natural she is. I want to see how she moves. I want to know if my bitches fuck with her because I, I'm a firm believer in like, I don't like women that don't like women, bro. Yeah, we all know that women like women, bro. And then if you religious enough, you'll see the King Solomon story. Women are amazing. You you see all the shit that 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 these kings did by literally having multiple women. Like, I don't know why the fuck y'all fight each other, but that's not even that that is my anti feminist movement, I guess. Well, I don't give a fuck. But then that should be my saying, bro. I should make a t shirt that says I don't give a fuck. Do you think that it's better for men to have multiple women or one woman? No, why you get that? Because personally, I think it depends on the man. It depends right, no, on the look, women, or women, this, women or as women. Long as, as long as you could afford it, you could have multiple. Outside of being able to afford it, the guy has to be built for that. Not everybody's built for that. Even if you have the money to afford it, some people will lose their mind. They don't know what to do with it. I think it depends. A goofy it, with money will fuck up the whole situation. That's a fact. I like women who are open minded. I like, for, I like for people who are open minded. I don't like if women. If people. women don't like women, bro, I would I would never be the guy. Like it, it's annoying because I've already been through that. I've mm. seen it. Like yeah. women that don't like women kind of annoy me. Mm. Why is that? They annoy me, bro. Do, do you feel like they're close minded? Yeah, I understand that. They don't understand it. I like women who like women. Women who like women tend to be way more open minded. Way more open minded. Way no, more grounded I, I in reality. Even say that. Like it's not even on some fire shit. It's just women that like women are better. It's a better situation. Mm. Like like for example, like let's say let's say you live with me, right? Yeah. My my household. Yeah. And then it's another woman there, right? So all the shit that she don't like doing. You could program the other women to do. Now, let me fix that situation yeah. in your head. Okay. Woman. Like, pay attention to this. So, let's say you don't like washing dishes. You don't like cleaning clothes. You don't like whatever. But I'm able to provide everything that we need, right? At that point in time, if you want to be an independent woman... You could still be an independent woman, but you could also hire the next one. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So it's not like... She'd be in charge of picking her successor, uh, uh, essentially. What kind of lifespan would she have, though? How soon would she need a successor? What would determine you not giving a fuck? Would it be like until you bored? Like, what, what would the expiration yeah, Exactly, be? but that would be the point. But what's like the expiration in general? Depends like maybe on like the quality a year, at that two point, years? Okay. That would be my input, her input. It depends on the we, person. And then we'll switch it off or like, and then she'll be able to pick her next success or like. It'll be a rotation. Be, it'll be a rotation. I understand. But that person will be helping you with regular duties, but they'll be able to help you with whatever needs to be done in the household. And if you want to keep her around forever, like, that's a whole nother conversation. But bro. how does the sex bar fit into that now? Now you have a rotation of, of women that you do your thing with. Where does the sex bot come in? I just replaced the sex bot. Oh, shit. That's the only way to replace it. 
Is there a situation where the sex bot will replace you? The sex bot will always be there. Based on the way that modern women are thinking, the sex bot, when the sex bot kicks in, mm. the sex bot will be able to come in, clean, do all that shit, do everything, and as soon as your woman leave the house, you be fucking the bot. But at the end of the day, that's how regular niggas think based on the, the, the way that they watch porn. If you try I, I don't, I don't, I don't watch it like, I don't watch porn, but I'm not saying that i never seen porn. Like, of course I watch porn. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. I've seen but you don't actively shit. watch it. But I don't actively Me, watch I it. I don't actively watch it because I think it's like it's fake. I wake up and deal with my shit and just go through my shit. I don't need to jerk my dick to think about like, oh, life is going to be all right. Like, da, da, da. like, I like dealing with my shit head on. And yeah. and sometimes that's, that's what promotes my anger or my mental space. But I, I would not promote that. Like, yeah, of course. Like, I know that it's there. I know that it's available. Yeah. And and you know sometimes I get disgusted and I I realize when I got disgusted by it, and I know niggas don't like it, but at the end of the day I know I got disgusted by it because I realize that real shit is being played. And then, when you say played, what do you mean? Like in views, like on like YouTube, you know, yeah, shit like real that. shit is being like viewed. Yeah, like niggas is showing bombs on countries and this that and shootouts, and I'm I'm just seeing like fucking like ten thousand views. And then I could just look at a porn side of a nigga just like rationally like fucking some random. Three million. That's like three million. I'm Four like, million. It'd be I'm high. Like, it's obvious that our mindset is off. So if if nobody could understand the concept of what I just said, like good luck, bro, because you will never get me. You know what I'm just saying? You will never get me. And unfortunately, <laughs> I don't want something. you to get me. And I don't even care if you get me. And, that's, and I really don't give a fuck. And I wish you knew me. And now, wait, I really don't care if you get it or not. I wish you, we all understood the perspective. And I wish real men would wake up and, like, literally, like, just stop watching that shit, bro. I think we're in a time where people are getting tired. People are getting tired. I'm tired, bro. I'm tired, too, but we're in a time where that's becoming a normal. People are getting tired. They're not accepting the bullshit. They're not accepting the modern thinking because they know it's not sustainable. It's not tested. Traditional systems have been around for hundreds and thousands of years and it's proven to work to lead to us being born. And if we love ourselves and we think that we have answers, then it's sh- it's merit in showing that everything that, that led up to now has value. This new shit? With the way people think now, it's, I don't know, it's a bit off. It's a bit off. I'm all in favor for certain levels of progressive thinking, but certain traditions of humanity need to be obta- need to be retained. For example, ability to to prepare meat, pre- to prepare animals, to prepare and preserve shit. That's all tradition. A lot of things are tradition and people misuse the word tradition. Tradition is something that's passed down. Tradition is something that's of a culture. Tradition is something that your ancestors have tested over and over and over, the descendants will then test and use what the ancestors have given them. And in that sense, I feel like tradition helps us map out the future. And if we discard tradition, we throw thrown away our futures. We need tradition. We need it. Without tradition, what is there? There's certain things I want to say that I'm not going to say on the podcast. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say what you want to no, say. What you I'm not say. doing that. Why not? Say what Nobody you want deserves say. that. Say what you want to say. This is for the people who actually have subscribed. This is for the people who are actually going to bump this later on when we on episode 100. And they go, damn, that was a bar. Go ahead. Say that shit. For them. For the future people. Episode 10. Go ahead. Like, look. Like, if you're able to mentally capacitate what's really going on yeah. and actually see what's in front of you. And I understand that females are emotional and mental logical. But I am a logical thinker, so I'm not asking anybody to jump out the box. But at the end of the day, if you could mentally capacitate, like, what's going on in front of you, and you could see what's going on, you could actually time what's going to happen next. And I know I sound crazy. No. You could time, accuracy. You could time what happens next. And it, it may not be a clear hit, but if you practice it over and over again... You could actually see what happens next. So if you actually listen to this video and you actually hear what I was saying, you should be able to practice to just sit down and not say nothing to yourself and just like meditate and like see what happens next. And then you're going to see that mm. you're closer and closer to the hit 
you'll be able to grab your bars, you'll be able to see what you got to do, and then you're going to see what you got to see. Now, at the point in time when that shit happens, don't be afraid of it because that's the biggest thing to get to the next step because yeah. when fear comes next, it's going to... It's gonna be something beautiful after fear. Yeah, you need you need the fuckery to to appreciate and accept the beauty. You need it. You can't just have beautiful all your life. You need the fuck shit. And that's what people misunderstand. People think that shit should just be beautiful, like this fairy tale. Twenty four seven. That's not real. What they call that shit? The the what the, the the yellow brick road. What's that? That's oh, from Wizard of Oz. Yeah, the yellow brick yeah, road. Yeah, get that shit out your head. Yo, look, the fear is necessary. So. The fear is necessary to test you if you're ready or not. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you know the Fugees? You know yes. the Fugees? Of course, the like, band. Ready or not, here I come. You can't hide. I find you. Uh, 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 uh. That's why we all love that song, because yeah. we know what we need to do next. But they were trying to warn us to like move forward. But we're missing the point. We're all missing the point. The music gives it away. Everything gives it away. We're just fucking idiots. You're all fucking idiots. I'm not going to hold you. And I don't care if you like me, fuck you too. But at the end of the day, we're all fucking idiots when it comes to like realizing what we need to do next. What do you think we need to do next? What's the next step? We spoke about sex bots, but what's the actual next step? We all need to... You really... I want to go there. Yeah, bro. I, I want to go there. You. What's the I next step? I hold you, bro. I'll, I'll tell you what we need to do. What's up? I'm on Wall Street, right? So I can see pre IPO. I can see all the shit moving. Like, look, like, look. To to move next, when I say move next, I'm talking about as people. I'm talking about black people. Let's just keep it a buck. Like, Hispanics, you're black like us. Asians, you're black like us. Let's stop with that bullshit. What we need to discuss is this get past all that. There's two. When it comes to stocks and everything, we need to figure out an international like group chat. And then we could buy out everything that they do. If everybody if everybody could look into what they're doing and like we could be like, all right, bet. Nobody buy Nikes fucking a month. The stock won't fall. And then we all buy it. You know what's going to happen to it? It's going to go back up. But the people that really have money and that's really about it, those are the people that need to get involved with the movement as far as that. Because regular people could do it. You could have fucking $200 in this, $300 in that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like the whales. You know what I'm saying? That That's how you make a difference. You make a difference by portraying how the stocks are going to move. I'm just trying to say that everybody that has stocks in certain things, yes, that they need to weld the stock. We're gonna go through this month. Nobody buy Nikes. Yeah, we need to control the stocks. We need to control the stocks. Yeah, if y'all really want control, control the stocks. So you mean controlling the stock on a collective level? On a collective level. Yeah. Do you think that that could be more done with crypto than stocks, or do you think that that can be done more with stocks over crypto? Crypto could never show. It would never show the real, the real perspective the the real perspective becomes in belief what stocks do you think people should do it then how what stocks do you think people should control nike big Adidas. brands big brands big everybody brands. who's in those stocks back out but but if the people that are well in the stocks like are not us exactly those people don't identify with the people who are buying it Actively, that's why you make the them pro- die. Those because people when you make are the them ones die, who are buying stake. When yeah. you make them die, they'll sell. And Thanks. then when they sell, we buy. How do you feel about trading bots? Because I'm working on a trading bot right now. Trading bots is it? Like if you imagine automating money, bro. Where's the fucking uh, automating money is the next level. What's the raisin shit that you made? I want some of that shit. The raisin shit. Yeah, when he. The the cashews and the trail that. mix. I already bought it. I make another one for you though. You made it already. You ate all that shit. Yeah, it wasn't that much. Yeah, I got know. I got more raisins. I got more ingredients. And shit. Yeah, I can make bro, another you one. Eat too much, bro. Sex before sex bots. People have expectations of each other, and because of those expectations, we jump through hoops. Once the sex bots are on the table, people are gonna say, "Fuck yo hoop, fuck Rick James, and fuck your couch." 
fuck your hoops. Nobody I don't got to do shit. All that extra I don't shit. have to do anything anymore. Everybody just wants to get their nut off. That's what I'm saying. But now when you have something that does it tailored for you, you don't got to like have off days and try new people and you got to take them out to dinner. No, you pay a flat or fee. Or risk having an STD. Exactly. There's no STD in it. It's safe sex. It's personalized for you. You pay one price and you don't got to pay nothing else. No, and never headache, again. Nothing. And that's your bot forever. What's going to be the value it's of a partner? It's going to be over, bro. I think the partner is going to actually have to be a partner. They're going to have to be a partner. If they're not a partner, it's not going to make sense to have sex with them. It's not going to make sense. It's a clip. It's going to be a clip for them. 100%. So now we spoke about sex bots. That's automating interpersonal relationships with people. What about money with this trading bot thing? I feel like that's a way for people to change how they view money. I think with AI and automation and machine learning, everything that we know will change fundamentally. You know what the problem with that is? What's the problem with that? The banks. What are the banks going to do? Because banks are the middlemen. They make their money off of being a middleman. When you cut out the middleman, they're going to be mad. But that's a billion-dollar industry. Banking? They found the whole system. Yo, bro. Go ahead. If, if they founded the whole system... When they feel like somebody's stepping on their toes, they're gonna go aggressive. They're gonna find rules, regulations. They're even gonna make messes happen just to make you doubt. They try to decentralize it. They're not doing it. They're centralizing it to be able to trade. I can't get in my Coinbase account without like verifying my identity anymore. Like, what the fuck you talking about? Like, look. So they figured out a way to regulate the shit. Boom. I'm gonna give you an example. You're the head of the fucking, you know, the Federal Reserve for, yeah. the, for America. And then I'm international. I want to talk to all the banks. Bank of America, Chase, you know, Navy Federal. Da, da, da. Hey, look, when money land this way, we're going to make sure it land this way. And they regulate it. Mm. So to make sure that your money is free. But everybody will go with the free money instead of waiting for it. This is a fact. Like, imagine this. Imagine, I'm like, oh, boom, you trade crypto, you got to wait 30 days for your bread. The worst mistake America made was getting rid of Trump. Mm. Why is that? He's the one that freed it up to begin with. Freed what up? Cash app, everything, the way that money moves internationally, it wasn't moving like that until Trump got in office. Would you run into politics, like on some like national election shit? What? Would you run into politics with a national election? Would I run into it? Yeah. I think that's what I'm meant for. Would you be a Republican or a Democrat? Or would you be like... Republican. Like independent. Republican? Well, tell me, what would your policies be? For the future, though. Because this podcast is about... The future of technology, the future of humans and artists. What would you do? In 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 New York in New York City right now. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna give you an example. Okay. Like if you file for LLC right now. Yeah. That shit is taking like three Six to eight months, months yeah, bro. It's gonna take a while. It's taking a while. I've had one of my friends accuse me of helping another friend out to get a LLC. And then accused you of helping somebody. What the fuck? What is that? That sounds salty as fuck. How dare you help them? Oh, oh fuck! It, it's taking too long. Like, look, bro. People be ungrateful. I, people are ungrateful as fuck. Bro. Talk that shit into the mic. That people are ungrateful. Me, bro, that shit hurt me. How does somebody accuse you of helping another person somebody with the LLC? Somebody accused me of helping somebody else with the LLC, and then I sat there. That's and a I'm wild like, accusation. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm a whole business partner here. Like, I'm gonna provide. I'm gonna make sure they got the space. I'm gonna make sure yeah. I eat. I'm gonna make sure they eat. I'm gonna make sure we all good. That's how I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, but it turned around to be a slap. But. If people aren't aware of what's going on, then it's not. But I like the Republican shit. And at the end of the day, I like it because of the tax write-offs. And I like the independent thinking. I like people that are thinking about creating their own space. You get what I'm trying to say? That's the future. And writing shit off. Like, yeah, I should write it off, nigga. Like, I did all of this. Like, give me my bread back because I created more jobs and I made more people free. Like, help me out here. You know what I'm saying? 
That's the point of being Republican, bro. Democrats, it's more like, all right, we're going to be more institutionalized. We're going to hire more IRS workers. Oh, we're going to hire more people to lock people up instead of showing people how to free themselves. Yeah. I believe in freedom. Freedom is important, but it's like, even in a society like what we have now, even if you're physically free, most people are in mental slavery. People wake up, and this is not to knock anybody who works a nine to five, who does labor jobs, but society bro, as me in being, America raises a labor force. They don't as, want as you to me be a being thinker, free myself. Want a labor bro, force? As me being free myself? Yeah. Sad to say. You still got to check in and make money. Unless we're un- unless we can omit money and not have to check in, we're all slaves. I called my aftermarket guy yesterday, right? Yeah. And I'm looking in the other shit, like, because I fuck with the car shit. And, yeah. And I call my guy, and I'm like, I'm talking to him, and I'm like, yo. Like, listen, I may be thinking about getting back in the game. I got 20 phone calls after that. Like, but at the end of the day, like, it's not that hard to make 250000 300000 in America if you know the system. How would somebody go about that if they know the system? Quickly. Like, you know what I mean? You don't got to go into crazy detail. Sales. Mm. You have to be able to sell. You're in a capitalist fucking country, you fucking idiot. Slap, slap. It's, this is not an institutionalized country. You have to learn how to fucking sell. If you were talking to somebody, how many? So, how many years experience would you say you have at sales? You said ten years. Over ten. So, if you have over ten years, what would you tell somebody who's getting new into sales and wanted to sell for the future and start their sales journey now? What would you tell them? Quick. Shut the fuck up. Get in the business and learn. I think it's about repetition. They just gotta do it. You're not gonna know unless you do it. You'll pick up, learn from the mistakes of the people who did it before you, but you just gotta do it. You know what this is sad to say? Some people have it and some people don't. How do you know somebody has it within them to sell? Well, how do you know specifically? How do you approach the losses? Oh, what's, what's this approach to somebody who can sell the way they deal with losses versus somebody who can't I'm going to give you losses? a vice versa experience. Okay, please. All right, so... A salesperson comes to me, like, oh, this customer wants this car, or, like, wants to do this, or what do I do? Yeah. And I'm like, yo, go back to the customer, ask them if they want to take the car today. Number one, the salesperson who can't tell, you know what they're going to say? What? Oh, why would I tell them that? Like, they're just here looking. You know what the other salesperson would say? That want to win? Run that shit up. Like, fuck it. I'm putting them in that shit. Like, all right, bet. This is what you're going to do. Take them on a test drive. Drive the car. So it's a whole nother process between somebody that <laughs> somebody that wants to sell and somebody that's just pussy. Period. That's it. So now, you, if somebody comes to me and be like, yo, this motherfucker ain't trying to buy shit. This is just kicking ties, but fuck it. I'm like, what car they interested in? So now I'm... I'm the guy that's literally coaching them to win. When you coach them to win, what is like the main thing that you find that you need to remind people about when in the realm of selling? What's the main thing that you always got to remind motherfuckers? You got to build. Mm, elaborate on that. You got to build. They got to build a network? Build no. What? You got to build. Oh, you got to build. You got to pay your bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to pay for your car. You got to pay for your house. Oh. You got to pay for your fucking shit. You got a bill, nigga. Like, you got a bill coming. Like, come on. Like, that, that's not how people waste their time. I could take you off the floor. If you're a great salesperson, I'll take you off the floor. I'll sit your people. I'll babysit them. But at the end of the day, you got to show me that you're willing to work. Yeah. Yeah. And I make that person great on the strength that I know that they're looking to win for me, too. What is the future of sales for you? With AI, machine learning, everything that's happening... What is the future of sales? The honest future. Not just what you would like, but what is the actual future based off of the way technology is going? In your no head? more talking. The only difference between winning and winning for real and bullshitting, like, is knowing what's going on. That's why I did the Wall Street shit. I didn't do the Wall Street shit to make money, bro. 
I did it to learn how to invest for my kids. You get me? That makes perfect sense. So when I did it, I didn't do it to like, oh, I'm going to make money on this shit. I'm like, yo, let me show my kids how to invest in pre-IPOs. Let me introduce my kids to the people that could help them to invest in pre-IPOs. God forbid anything happens to me, my kids will be able to go They'll there. They'll be fine. Right, but I took the time out, and I, bro, I learned the whole shit. I learned all the pitch books. I learned how to how to work with shit, how the shit works, how the funding works, how everything works, how the kickbacks is going, how the valuations is going. This shit was amazing, bro. Do you think machines can sell to, to humans better than humans can sell to humans? That hurt my feelings. <laughs> That's a doozy. If the lights shut off in New York, what do most people do? They break in. People go they savage steal, mode. People go savage mode. They rob. Yeah. Where, where does anybody think about the people that don't life support, the people that, for the family that needs food mm. in the hospital? Nobody cares. Will machines be better salespeople than humans selling to people? They already are. Mm. At the internet. Yeah, that's the answer. They already are. This is true. I think a lot of jobs are going to become obsolete because of because of how advanced machines are. We give them all this data. We give these companies so much data about who we are, what we like, things that we don't even notice. I talk about it in my music, nigga. Just fine. You heard me spit about that shit. Like AI hey, yeah, people, like I love it, like because it gives all the information. But it's not because it's, it's tools, though. It's not de decentralizing humans. It's just understanding the tools that are in front of us. Yeah. Like we could be so much better of a race, but we choose not to. We could evaluate shit. Like, like it, it stops on Wall Street. Like Flexport. Like Flexport. The the elite shit about certain shit. And I want to explain this shit because it's not demonic. It's like, like Flexport literally logistically like scans out how much space is in a fucking container to send something across the water. Mm. That's that's big math. Right. That's so not little math. So it's like, you're sending this much of this, you're sending this much of that, you're sending this much of that. Flexport is going to be able to compact your shit, make sure that everything gets sent from here to here, and it's enough. It's as short as the fucking tampons, it's as short as the fucking pampers, it's as short as, yeah, bro, it's as short as everything. Waters, but we don't realize that there are shortages already. That's why they're trying to population control. So you're not understanding because the shortages and things aren't moving correctly because of COVID. But then I don't even want to talk about conspiracies. But at the end of the day, these stop, these things are able to calculate like what we're missing on. So you're gonna you're gonna spend all this money in gas to send something from one side of the world to the next. For a half contained container. So that's why these stocks are making sense. The Flexport, the Stripe, the this, the that. They're, they, they already figured it out. Like, it's over, bro. If our people don't get wise enough to just throw their money in this shit, and that's why I throw my money in this shit. I throw my money in this shit, and I know that it's going to kick. Because I already know the research. Because I actually, I actually looked at the pitch book. I've actually seen it. I could sit here, and I'm like, damn, this shit could happen next week. This shit could happen in five years. But I know when that... That should happen in five years. Nigga. Like, I could be a bum on the street, nigga, and be a multi-billionaire, like, right away. What is the future of money? I personally believe that the government is going to make their own decentralized... It's going to be a centralized, decentralized currency, basically, meaning that they can track people outside of dollars. And without tracking people with the dollar... Because, you know, a lot of businesses use dollars because they... You know what I mean? Taxation, paying people and whatnot. The next level is going to be able to be tracking everybody with everything. Nobody can evade shit. That's what I think the future of money is in America specifically. And it's fucked up. But they're going to use the blockchain to create this centralized currency that is traceable much more efficiently than what we have What do you think they're trying now. to do, bro? That's what they're doing now. What yeah. do you think the future of money is? Is what I'm asking you. I can see the beautiful and I can see the worst. What do you see? What do you want to hear? You want to hear the good or the bad? I want to hear the most possible. All right. The most possible. The way that they move money around and the way that they do, it's all digital. Yeah. Number one, they don't control the gold. Nothing controls anything. We've been off the gold standard for those of y'all who don't know. We don't fiat currency. It's not backed by gold. If any y'all are praying money. Like, yeah. And just throwing money. But fuck throwing money. It's digital money now. It's worse than just printing it. 
Yeah. Because instead of me printing it, I could like show it. It's just numbers. You just make numbers out the blue. If if everybody doesn't see that money is all mental, you're wrong. I'm not gonna get into that. But it doesn't make any sense to like chase money. Why? Chase purpose. Mm, I agree with that. You're chasing something that they could just physically just reprint. I make music and I I do shit like that because as much as I don't want it, like, I don't like social media and shit like that, but I know that my kids will be able to listen to me. And I know that people will be able to listen to me. That's important. And when you make That's, music and when I make music, it's different. It's not because of the money. It's not because of the money. When you chase money, you'll always be chasing something. And you'll never catch up to me, money. Bro. You can never chase money. You'll never catch it. You will never catch... Nobody will... Anybody listening to this, you will never catch up to money. Money will always outmaneuver you because it can always be printed in multitudes. <laughs> you'll, all, you'll always never... I know everybody. I know everybody on the podcast. I'm pretty <coughs> sure that they seen money heist. Like, oh, that was a great. You shit. could reprint money. You could do, bro. You could yeah. leverage money and, yeah. You could scale money. You could do it through business. Like, it's so much ways to learn about money. But it would never fulfill what you're trying to do. Money is a means. Money is a tool. It's a means of resource allocation. I was listening to um, Elon Musk talk to Lex. Elon Friedman. Musk, he's the worst. Like I hate watching he, him. He Elon told, Musk. Spoke he stresses to, me out. But hold bro. on, hold on. Elon Musk spoke to Lex Friedman. You know what he said about money? He said something brilliant. People feel mixed opinions about him, but he said something brilliant because the the money that we have it's based off of old code in terms of its storage and tracking of numbers. He said money is a tool for resource allocation across time and space. That's all money is. It's a means of resource drink, allocation bro. across time and space. That's deep. That's all it is. I fuck with him for saying that because I've ran through so much money before, like, and I've been through mad shit. At the end of the day, you know, you know, you know what the thing that bothers me what? when I'm done? What bothers you? Relationships. Why is that? And... Shit money, that happens. Is it because money changes people? Yeah. Mm. And the shit, like, it becomes personal. And and the, the fact is that you realize that you could do it again. Mm. But why am I doing it? Yeah, is what it, is the why? <laughs> With money without why is useless. And that's what I'm going to tell you. With Deion, when I talk about Deion Sanders, yeah. you know the funny thing about everything? What's the funny thing? Every day in the week, what does it end with? In what sense? What do you mean? What does it end with? A letter. With Everything a end with a Y. Yeah, a Y. <laughs> you silly. It ends with an A, too. It ends with a D, too. No, it ends with a Y, Do, 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 do. It ends no, with a no, no, D. No, 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 no. And an A, and a no, Y. No. That was the most, one of the most brilliant things I've ever heard. And it was so simple. Like, some of the most simple things are Everything so brilliant. Everything every day ends with a Y. I feel so sad for people who don't have a Y. Bro, bro, if you we, don't have a we, purpose... We woke up every day. We do. Learning Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We learn, we learn that shit, but at the end of the day, we're missing the simple parts. Like, every day ends with a fucking Y. Like, at the end of your day, you should be like, why did I do that? You know what the deepness, the, the depth You're of Y... You're not getting me right now. I, I hear you, me. but you know what the depth of Y is? Yeah. It goes what we talked about earlier. Intention. Exactly. A day without intention is a waste. It's a waste. People need intention. If you're not doing something with the intent of something else, why are you why are you doing it? Exactly. Why? What is the why? If you don't know your why, you don't know what you're doing. If you don't know your why. Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, E, everything why. Seven whys. If you don't have a why, why, what are you doing? Why, why are you doing what you're doing? Why didn't we realize that yet? And why? Did you uh, when you I, want my honest answer? Why am I don't saying make, don't that make, right now? Don't make me now. sit up straight in this chat. Don't make me sit no, up straight. No, I'm saying that right now to notice that like, like we all miss the signs that our ancestors already gave us. What did we miss? What are the signs that our ancestors gave us that we missed? 
What did we miss? You really want to do this, bro? Yeah, I want to. Because as we're talking about this, there's going to be people who are in areas that don't have people like us in their lives. And I want to be there for them because I would want that for me. If you were sitting in a city in Kansas right now, yeah, everybody was sleep. Hear me out. If everybody was sleep in your city and you was in a small city, you'd want to hear this right now. If this is what you identified with. So I want to do this for them. I know. We hear, we speak about this all the time, but it's deeper than us. It's about enlightening people. It's about inspiring thought. And it's about opening people's eyes to a possible future that they want outside of what society has laid out for us. And also society. making us a target. Yeah, but fuck them. Because once this goes out, there's more than us. There's too many targets. Correct. We spoke about the why, and you were saying that there's something missing. Yeah. All right, so... <sighs> All right. Why does society stop us from focusing on the why? I personally think it's to keep a society of workers, people who are smart enough to do a role, to labor, but who live just long enough to get this Let shit done, finish. but not live too long and not be too smart to not work. That's what I think. No, we're called crazy. Why? Exactly. <laughs> Why are we called crazy? Right. So, who um, are we? The people that think outside of the box are not institutionalized, mm. or they're not like, you know, like you go to class and you may like, you hear a teacher say some bullshit over and over again, then you want to question the teacher, and then you yeah. get punished or failed class because yeah. you question some shit in society or whatever the case may be. It's been so well structured that what you're doing was so wrong. They actually made rules for you to be so wrong that they'll seem right even making you wrong. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if they're actually... You see, I'm, I'm, I'm getting deeper with this. So if if you actually, like, think about it, yeah. like, every time that you felt like you were right and had to stand up for yourself, you got punished. Mm. And as you got punished, you realized that I shouldn't be punished. I just want to get through the system yeah. and be regular and normal like everybody else. So at the end of the day, your your individuality and your creativity was shushed. So who knows what the fuck you could have been if you actually said fuck it. And kept going. And kept going. And that's what I do now. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I've been institutionalized. I know what it feels like. I've run through shit. And I, I've been through shit. But I'm at the point that I'm so mentally strong, I could go back through shit to raise funds and do other shit. So I don't give a fuck. So I had to make myself even mentally healthy enough to actually take those steps so I could understand if you feel like you need to be something that you don't need to be. I could understand if you're, like, trying to be something or pushing the envelope. I could understand, like, if you're just greed at shit but nobody sees it. And that hurts, too, because even if you're great at shit, everybody else is so institutionalized, they'll shut you down. And exactly. People will kill the... I feel like that's something no, that you I learned feel me or not? That's something I actually learned through life because I... Yeah, I'm nigga, gifted. that shit is weird. I'm gifted in many senses, and I had to learn to accept my gifts and love myself to really have my gifts start to flourish, learn how I learn. That's one of my greatest gifts that I have, to know how I learn. And a lot of people, they have, they're gifted. But if other people around you tell you that your gift is nothing, you'll believe that you'll your believe gift that is a shit. curse. You'll believe your gift is nothing. No, but you see how You'll lose that? your blessing. Don't let me get on this, bro. People lose their blessing every they day. They come for me, bro. I, I, yo, I think we're on a planet of gods who forgot that they're gods. I'm That's what's happening. God, bro. We're on a planet of gods uh, nah. who forgot that they're gods, they're, they're, who are trained that they're not gods when they have that ability in them. They have that power. They have that 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 spark of something in them. But society doesn't want you to actualize that. If everybody actualized that, there would be no labor force, really. It would be too tiny. They need people to kill their dreams. They need people to kill their dreams to have society run because you need people on the bottom to have people at the top. And the people at the top don't give a fuck about your dreams. They want you to stay in line so they can keep making money. So fuck your dreams. Go to work. Punch in them 40 to 80 to 120 hours a week so I can get this new Benz truck, bitch. 
punch in the mouse so I can get my new mansion. Punch in the mouse so I can get my freaking space link. Punch in the mouse so I can go to space. Punch in the mouse so I can buy shit for my family. That's the mentality of the top going down to the bottom. And the middle class is going to keep getting smaller and smaller as we go through society, in my opinion. My humble opinion. Well said. That's what it is. The fuck we going to do now? We got to get these sex bots to not get distracted. <laughs> That's what we got to do. We got to get these... Going back to the sex bots, we got to get focused. And I feel like right now we're in a society where there's so many distractions. People are selling sex. People are selling drugs. People are selling violence. People are selling street life. People are selling whatever to get people to be distracted from what the true purpose is. And honestly... Shit like sex bots is gonna distract people less. Yeah, it's gonna be a distraction for people who just gonna stay inside and not come outside because they hooked on a sex bot. But it's also gonna free people up who are chasing sex. They put a one time payment onto something. They get rid of that desire and that 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 addiction. I'm not gonna hold you. What's up? I ain't chased sex in like two years. Why did you chase sex the last time you chased sex? Why? Why do people say chase sex? Why? It's a feeling. What is that feeling? Why do we chase that feeling? Are we just programmed like that? What do you think? Um, I know God's honest truth. I think that... I, I know why men chase sex. I don't know why women chase sex. This is how I, I express myself based on the chase. It's yeah. based on the chase and the kill. And it's it's almost like hunting. You know what it I'm is saying? a hunt. It is hunting. It's not like hunting. It is a hunt. It is a hunt. So it's like it's a hunt. But after the hunt is done. There's always another hunt. Exactly. The hunt never is really done. The no. whole point of hunting is no, to sing your stuff for the short I mean. term. This is where I realized I drew the ball. Mm. When I realized I just kept hunting. Mm. So I'm like, yo, I'm on I'm just hunting, hunting, hunting. Like, where's the the winner of that. So I chill. Mm. And I found quality. I've been through a marriage. Been through mad shit. I have kids. And then after I look back at it, none of it made sense. Why is that? Why didn't it make sense to you after you had wife, marriage, kids, money, everything? Why didn't it make sense to you? I wasn't happy. Why would why none of that filled the happiness that you wanted? Because the more that you do, the more that you need. It's like if you fill something up and then you throw it out, but then it still has the same space that's there. Yeah. Like you still gotta keep filling that void. But as you I keep understand. filling that void over and over again, and then as a man in this society, like you're supposed to always fill that void. What happens to the point where you're like, yo, I'm emotionally done over this shit? Like I'm I literally need time for myself. I need to chill. Like, I need to do this. And then that all becomes a problem. So instead of you being chill, now it becomes a problem. Now this becomes a problem. Everything that you literally do to chill mentally that you were Gucci with to begin with becomes a problem. Mm. And then you're like, am I really myself anymore? And then, it's, damn, I ain't going to hold you. I think Yeezy said all this in his bars. But it ain't that sunny anymore. <laughs> yeah, he did it. Wait. Thank you. But anyway, like you start to think in your mind, like, yo, I already did all that. You 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 think you checked all the boxes, but then after you think you checked all the boxes, you know what box comes around after? What what box comes after that? After you think you checked all the boxes, you don't got no time for me. Mm. Mm. And then you're like, yo, there's always a box that's not checked when you fit when you're chasing you're like, something that can't be filled. No, I'm trying to answer the question correctly, bro. Ain't no trying. When that, when you're that, making us do push-ups. That cool. But when the box wasn't checked, I'm like, I did everything already. And I'm like, damn, I thought I created the perfect family. Yeah. When I realized I just created the perfect kids. And I'll take that. I'll take that over arguing, over fighting, over going on vacations and arguing. Yeah. I got PTSD. I, th- I think I went on vacation, like, I went to the DR. And then this girl that I was talking to, that, that, I think I probably told you the story already. When she argued with me on vacation, 
And it wasn't even a bad argument. Yeah. It was an argument over paying the bill. I try to pay. She says, it's your birthday. So she slapped my hand. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, look. Like, I'm not going to hold you. Like, Don't slap my hand. Yeah. And I'm paying the bill. I'm out with you. Like, I'm paying the bill. Like, that's what I'm used to doing. Yeah. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. She took offense to it. And I'm like, all right, bet. But that was probably that's my minor fault, shit. too. That's minor shit, though. I'm a weirdo, bro. I got up, went to take a piss, just walked outside. Like, you want to pay it, pay it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to stand there and watch you do it. Like, do it. Yeah. But that's probably being, being egotistical or just being like a man in the frame that I'm thinking. Hmm. Makes sense. <laughs> but after that, like, I, I've had PTSD of arguing on vacations. Like, I've done so much nice shit. Yeah. And I argued on vacations. What was that's the original question? That's not it to argue on vacations. Huh? I said, that's not it to argue on vacations. This is weird, bro. I have I have a segment that I want to do, and I want to um share it with you. It's what? called Flash Fusion. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and I want you to answer them quick. You ready? It's that Flash Fusion. I'm always ready, bro. All right, let's get it. Just just a heads up, for those of y'all who don't know, this eleven sixty six podcast. This is episode ten. Um, Mickey Finance, he's from episode one. Subscribe, you bitch ass thinkers. Subscribe. If you ain't subscribed, if you ain't liked, if you didn't leave five stars, if you ain't commented, you tripping. You you actually tripping. You know what? Stop watching this. If you're not gonna support, stop watching this right now. Get the hell off. Don't watch this. If mm-hmm. you are supporting, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Without your support, we'd be able to do this. I'm gonna put one minute on the clock. You ready? Ready? Three, two, one. What's your favorite piece of tech you can't live without? Cell phone. Analog or digital art? Digital. Most inspiring artist of all time? Me. Tell me a book that changed your life. The Alchemist. Ooh, one word to describe the future. Fuck everybody. What's your go-to creative outlet? Meditation. One skill you'd love to master? Patience. What's a technology you think is overrated? Mm. Mm. (laughs) Go ahead. A technology you think is overrated. What is that? What's overrated to you? (laughs) Cell phones. Favorite art movement in history? Three, two, one. Boom. Favorite art movement? Yeah, get that last question. Favorite art movement in history? The Harlem Renaissance is it. Yeah. Yeah, you got some questions and you got nine of them. eh, Including the last one, you got nine of them. I probably fucked up on a couple of them. Ain't no fuck ups. This is your personal thing. The the same thing that that brought the the most important shit was the same shit that that turned it back. Yo, some of our answers is, is a similar Favorite piece of tech you can't live without cell phone for me too. Analog or digital art. I like digital art because digital art, like analog is the history and I always have respect for analog art, but digital is key. Most inspiring artist of all time. Uh, what uh, who did I name? Who did you name? I don't remember. I think we skipped over that. I think me. I think. I said me. I'm my most inspiring artist, but if I outside of me, I think Kanye. A book that changed your life for me, I would also say The Alchemist. You said that too? I would have said the alchemist. Hundred uh, to me is the alchemist for sure. The alchemist. One word my life. to describe the future. What did I say? What did you say? Did no, you even? You, did you even answer it? Yeah. What did you say? Um, I'm not answering. We going It'll be in the video. For me, one word to describe the future would be vast, vast. No, Go to creative outlet. Obviously, music. One skill I love answers, to master. Bro. Focus. I know. I, I know. I hit it on the head the right away. Like I'm I know, because it was so right. fast. Like, I techn- like what technology you said is overrated? Did cell, you know? cell phones? That's what you said. Yeah. A technology. The same shit o- that was the most important is the same thing that was overrated. I think cell phones. You are You want to know why it's overrated? We play because so much money the, it, it shit. takes away our memory. It does. We offload like, a lot I, of information. I, I'm, to I'm so. Phone. I'm so like. This shit is so annoying when I don't have my cell phone, nigga. Like I can't remember numbers. Like 
Back in I'm the day, bitches. remember yeah, you I used was... to have to remember phone numbers. Nobody remembers phone right. numbers so no the more. The same shit that's the most. I remember back in the, the day. Mo- you have the a most book. inspirational shit to me yeah. is also the same shit that's taken away from me. I remember having a no, book. No, but that's a balance. It is a balance. Yeah, you, that's you, why I'm like the same thing. Cell phone. Cell phone. But, but hey, yo, if we no. play in Devil's Advocate, we could play it on two sides. Even though you can't remember numbers because it's on your phone, you can use your brain power for other more important tasks. You don't need to remember little shit no more. You can focus on the bigger picture with technology. You focus on other shit, bigger tasks at hand, bigger fish to fry. You. I can, I can focus on bigger fish to fry. You. Yeah. We're having a little fish in deep waters. Favorite, also, favorite art movie in history, definitely Harlem Renaissance. What are you saying? We're having a little fish in deep waters. Little fish in deep waters get eaten up. They're food. So, you think that you don't remember numbers and shit? I remember numbers. Nigga, listen to me. I'm not saying you. Yeah. Look at what happens to these people. Yeah. Like, they don't remember shit. Facts. If I get locked up, I know I could get on the phone and I could call. Yeah, well, if you don't have your phone, because you're don't holding. Need you're like, you, you have to know some numbers. Yeah, you need to know some I know. numbers. I know. I know three, four numbers that I could, at least five numbers where I'm Gucci. I'm bro. Just listen to but my, my answers is correct, bro. That's my I'm sticking to it. No, stick with your I'm not here to change your answers. I like your answers. Oh, I'm gonna just throw a, a curveball, Android or iPhone. I'm not answering that. <laughs> and I'll answer that. No, I the the Android is obviously a better phone. But the iPhone is more mm-hmm. user accessible based on it just being around. I agree with you. I think the Android is a better. It's I think better the Android is has... more technologically uh, advanced, but I think an iPhone is a better phone. Does that make sense? The Be- Android is a better phone because it's a computer in your hand. I think the Android. And if you're more, if you're more technologically savvy, the Android. You need an Android. Yeah. The Android is a better phone, but the iPhone. This is one thing I will guarantee about the iPhone: it doesn't miss a call. It's always there. It learns how to like segregate its memory and iCloud shit. Like it's it's a way that I would never miss a call. I would never miss a call on the iPhone, bro. I think the iPhone is good for people who need that user interface. For people who are on some tech tech, like you, like you need nah, APKs. Tech, tech, you need- if you a tech person, get you an Android. If you just need a simple phone, you only need a, you don't need more than an iPhone. You don't because you're not gonna you. I was telling my mother this because my mother has a Why tablet. She, she has a, um, a Google. I, I've been having this iPhone argument since Blackberries. People are retarded, though. And Blackberries. I'm going to piss people off when I say this. Bro? Nigga, I'm BBM? Blackberry Bolt. B- remember the sidekicks and BBMs and AOL? I remember miss, AOL AIM? I miss my Blackberry, bro. I miss I miss my Blackberry. To be honest with you, I'm like, where's my Blackberry Bolt? BBM is dead, my friend. Huh? BBM is gone. It might come back one day, but BBM dead. It's coming back. The what? same way like clothes does. Facts. Retro, retro, retro. It's retro as fuck. But you know what we all fail to realize? What? What we fail to realize? That shit goes in a circle, bro. But it's history. History repeats itself. Exactly. That's what it is. Now you got it. So now what? That's how I keep my shit. Bro, I remember when the date, I bought, I bought my last products. Mm. I went out, had a good night yeah. with my girl, right? And I'm like, yo, I'm gonna keep these products. That was the only night I worked. But you know what? Products is back. Mm. And I rock my products. My shit's is classics. Yeah. Nobody got them. The same products that I bought for fucking $300. Yeah. They're they worth were, more they now. They're worth $1,200. Oof. And they're dusty. And I can sell them for $1,200. Dusty? Yeah. Fire. <laughs> nah, I'm being real. Like, clean them hoes up and sell them for 17 The devil wears Prada. And that's the same way I feel about my bitches. You Your bitches is the devils who are proud of? That's how you feel? Oh, shit. Yeah. For those of y'all who are just hearing this and not seeing it, he just nodded his head, yeah. Mud. Nah, because some people are going to be listening to this on like Apple or whatever, or Spotify. So, nigga, I don't want to leave if, that if, 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 I'm gonna tell We you love y'all truth. too. Leave five stars. No, if I'm going to leave five stars, truth. fuck I'm you. I'm going to tell you the truth. It's even the same way with the bitches. Yeah. It's the same way with anything. Like, yeah. I could chill right now, right? Yeah. Like, my baby mama hate my guts. 
a year from now? Yeah. Two years? It becomes the optimal play. And it comes with the hurt, the pain, the everything. As long as you were optimally there in the beginning, hmm. it'll be a responsibility there to feel like it needs to be fulfilled. Yeah. Like, damn, he wasn't doing that because I wasn't doing this. Like, yeah. And then you could openly just say that. And then it becomes, it's just, it's weird, bro. It's not weird. It's communication. But communication is a beautiful art that I believe is getting lost right now. People are learning how to communicate in means that aren't natural. And as that keeps going, people are going to lose what it is to communicate with others by just being face-to-face and vibing. Being face-to-face and just talking it out. Uh, communication is everything. It's everything. People are being becoming gradually shittier communicators. ADD rates are going higher. ADHD rates are going higher. People got more anxiety. People got more stress. People got more depression. People are having less sex. People don't know how to deal with each other more than ever. That's what all the indicators and parameters are pointing to. So it's like, how do we bring that back? How do we bring that back? What do you think? I think we need to get people psychedelics, but that's a different story. Music. Oh, uh, we have music. We elaborate. We have a lot of shitty music, but what do you mean music? There's a lot of good music nowadays. I'm not gonna shit on the artists who are actually putting out fire, but there's a people are programmed to shitty music, and I I think that's a big role in why people are fucked up. If we have all the resources to look and listen to like who we want to listen to, yeah, why do we choose to listen to what they tell us to listen to? Because of programming. There's a rule in, in music, right? There's a rule in sound. When you hear something enough times, you know your brain the, likes it. Did you know you, that? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you two examples. Well, hold on. Did you know that? I know that. But I'm, I'm going to give you two examples. Yes. Like, look. Like, my dad. Yes. Like, he was my father. But he, had, he was a gallus. Mm. Not that, real shit. Mm. I'm going to give you a real example. Yeah. Like, if he came home and... He was two days on the road, a day on the road. Yeah. In the backyard. Nigga came home. He had no cell phone. So when he pulled up, you know what's so beautiful about it? What? We just happy to see him alive when he's home. Facts. We didn't care about what gal he was with, none of that. It's like you're alive and well, Pops. You're alive and well. Well, the cell phone, the FaceTiming, the the calling, the, the tracking, like. Why you didn't pick up your phone? Oh, I can see you on your locations. Oh, like, that shit just gets icky. So, at the end of the day, we're ruining the beauty of just loving each other. The technology is being a barrier instead of a bridge in a lot of cases. We It's supposed to be a barrier. The intent is for it to... I mean, the intent is for it to be a bridge, but it ends up it's being boring. a barrier. It's boring. And it's boring. People think that it's exciting. Like, I know people that get up and just check their social media. That's boring, bro. Facts. Why are you getting up to watch somebody else's life? Watch your mind. That's the worst thing. Science has shown. And for those of y'all who don't know, check Andrew Huberman. Check all the sorts yeah, of different neuro mind, scientists. Bro. Check your fucking mind. You do not want to check social media when you wake up. When you wake up and when you go to bed, those are the two times of optimal neuroplasticity in your day. When you wake up, you're the most susceptible to messaging. So if you're programming yourself when you wake up, to watch other people, you're fucking yourself up for the day. You setting yourself up with a big ass, fat ass L, a big ass loss when you wake up. Instead of watching social media when you wake up, learn something new, yeah, stretch, yeah. make your bed, do something, get a W in the day when you first start up. Don't start off the day with a with a L by watching somebody's success and feeling bad about your life or being programmed for the rest of the day to conform to what other people believe. Waking up and seeing social media is not it. That's not it. It's not it. Yo. What you got to tell these people for the future? How how can somebody prepare for the future and before we wrap this up? That's a good fucking question, bro. How do you prepare for the future? Right now. We're in like March twenty something, twenty twenty three. About to be April. How does somebody prepare for the future? To be honest, I was gonna get hype and I was gonna yell. But I'm going to calm it down. And I'm going to say this. Like, look. 
This is going to sound crazy to y'all. Work on doing nothing. Break that down. What? Work on doing nothing. Work on doing nothing. What is I'm going to break it down. Yeah, that's interesting. Work on doing nothing. So, if y'all really listen to this shit, bro, trust me. You're not going to fail at this. Work on getting to the point where it's absolutely nothing else for you to do. So you're not feeling bad, sad, you have no emotions. Get to the point where you actually indulge, like, just being. Would it be better to say work on feeling nothing? Because doing nothing is very different than feeling nothing. No, you got to go through your day-to-day feeling yeah. nothing. Yeah. So work on feeling nothing. Work on feeling nothing. <laughs> Let's go through your day-to-day. And then what that will happen is that it will turn the volume down in your head of yeah. being egotistical. So mm. when you take the ego out of the picture, so when you take the ego out of the picture, what that's going to ultimately do for you is that you're going to actually be able to hear everybody else's thoughts. Yeah. So when you're able to hear everybody else's thoughts, then you'll be able to create a better moment the next day. Mm. And then the next day. So you'd be like, okay, like, all right, I'll come in. She's mad. She didn't have coffee. Bring coffee. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he's mad because the paperwork wasn't done. Have your paperwork done. Yeah. Oh, he's mad because I didn't acknowledge him. Call him. Yo. Yeah. You go? Yeah, sir. Boom. So now you're, you're actually eliminating the things that would make your life smoother by actually doing Nothing. Well, they'll be eliminating the things that makes their life more difficult, not eliminating what makes their life smoother. However you want to put it. Yeah, because they're making their life easier, so they're eliminating the roadblocks of their life. Correct? Correct. I've done it before. I bought, the, you know what I'm saying? I've yeah. I've dealerships. I bought the whole girls upstairs all lunch. Just, just killing one of those things sometimes may fix all the things that you did wrong. People got to do it. They got to do the things that they want. If you're not doing what you want and doing what you need in your life to make you happy, what life is that? What is that? It's a shell. It's a shell. Everything is execution. We can only lead by example. I'm actually in the middle of executing right now. Hell yeah. And I love it. All right, boom. So we're going to... Can you close the door? So we're going to wrap this up. We spoke about sex dolls, aspiration, money, um, how to level up. We spoke about so many things, and honestly, it all comes down to this. Prepare for the future. Whether you're optimistic about it, whether you're pessimistic about it, regardless, prepare for the future by being the best you. At the end of the day, as humans, we're all connected to each other. It's about what tool are you going to be for society? Are you going to be something in favor of society's destruction or something in favor of society's prosperity. Regardless, make sure you pick prosperity. I'm not going to tell you how to be destructive for society. But when you do this, do it with knowing your why. You must know your why. Figure out that why. Learn how you learn. Get actual skills. Don't get caught up in what everybody's doing. Fuck them. Get caught up in you. What we spoke about last time, Mickey Finance was on the podcast, was getting caught up. In, um, what was it? Uh, being aggressive with yourself. That's what we spoke about. Be aggressive with you. As you're being aggressive with you, you'll have the answers. You'll find the answers. Follow your gut. This is 1166 Podcast. This is episode 10. We signing out. I'm Black Zen, your host, B L K Z E N. We got Mickey Finance with you. M I C K E Y F I N A N C E. Mickey, what's going on? What you got to say to the people? Fuck everybody. Love you. Done. That's it.